that we know that truth, whenever we see a commandment from God's word, we must recognize that he's given it for our good. Whenever we see a commandment from the Lord, we must recognize that he's given us that commandment for our good because his motivation is love. With that being the case, would you turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 18. Will you have it? Say amen. If you need me to wait on me, you say wait on me. Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 and it reads in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning let me read it from the Amplified Bible. It says, Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstance may be. Be thankful and give thanks, for this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and mediator of that will. First of all, when we look at this particular scripture, sometimes we may think, how is it possible for us to give thanks always. Well, look at the scripture. The scripture says, in everything, give thanks. He did not say for everything, give thanks. There is a difference. I think we don't always see the difference. When my car breaks down, I don't give them thanks for the car breaking down, but I give them thanks that somebody came by and picked me up while the car broke down. So he's saying no matter what situation you find yourself in, although the situation may not be popular, you are to give thanks. Mm, why? Because what I found out, there is power in giving thanks. Go ahead. We're just going to deal with four. That's my subject for this morning. The power of giving thanks. Since I know God is love, and his motivation is love, and his motive is love, I know he's just not on a hype truck or ego truck when he wants me to give thanks. Mm -hmm. I know he's doing it for an internal purpose. He sees something deeper. He wants me to give thanks because there's a deeper reason that's going to be beneficial to me. But in most, in many cases, we look at what we're going through and say, I can't give thanks. And if you could not give thanks, God would have never told you to. Okay. Mm, that's interesting, isn't it? If you could not give thanks in every situation, he would have never told you to. The thing is, do you want to give thanks or do you want to have your pity party? Mm. Because he, one of the things, one of the things that thanks is going to do is going to change. The first power that giving thanks has is it changes our outlook on our circumstance. Uh -huh. And when you begin to give thanks, you can't have a pity party. Mm, that's right. It's like changing the, you at a party and they change the music up there. You in the middle of just going off the fast music, then all of a sudden they change it to a slow. You trying to figure out what happened. Y'all didn't give me no warning. When you give thanks, it changes your outlook on what you're going through. And many people still want to have a pity party. That's why they don't want to give thanks. Uh, I'm reminding my daughter, Olivia's TV broke. And I put a new TV in her room. She went in there and she said, wow, that's a small TV. <laughs> She said it twice. Wow, that's a small TV. He said, thank God I got a TV. Because she knew how it was to be without a TV. It is, you can look at the smallness or the bigness of what you're going through, or you can be thankful that you have something while you're going through. It all depends on how you're going to look at it. And if you would dare give thanks, it will change how you look at your situation. Well, Pastor, I don't see nothing to get 
you're minus four, you ain't thought hard enough. Ah, uh, go ahead, sir. You ain't thought hard enough. Because I guarantee you, you may have a bad situation, but if you dare talk to somebody else, uh -huh. you'll find somebody got a worse situation than you. Uh -huh. The man used to complain that I don't have no shoes to wear until he saw a man that didn't have no feet to put shoes on. He realized if somebody out there is going through something worse than I am, and I need to be thankful that it's not as bad uh -huh. yeah. as it could be. Yeah. Woke up one morning this week, woke up and looked at the paper that the plant was closing down in Smith and Portsmouth, the Smithfield plant, losing 435 jobs. And I looked at it and said, well, Lord, thank you for a job. Yeah. No matter how you may feel about your job, I'm not one of those 435 to get a peach slip and don't know where they're going to get another job. You may not like your job, but when you look at something like that, you say, Lord, thank you for a job. Thank you. When you give thanks, it changes your outlook on your circumstance and maybe, 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 maybe you have the attitude because you haven't been given thanks. Maybe you have the attitude at work because you haven't been given thanks. Maybe you have the attitude when you drive that car because you haven't been given thanks. I learned something about God. If I'm not content where I am, he don't usually give no promotion. Oh God, I actually got more amen from God. That's okay, I know that's a hard, that's another horse. If I'm not thankful for what I am, he don't give no promotion. If you're not thankful for the hump that you got, the smoking but still bringing you to church, don't look for nothing better because he wants to know, will you be thankful with that? I'll give you something else. Yes, yes, yes. But if you're not thankful for the small things, you're not going to be thankful for the big things. So first, the power of giving thanks first, it changes our outlook on our situation and makes us to realize that it's not as bad as we think it is. Yes, yes. The second power of giving thanks is it helps us not to take things for granted. Yes. It helps us not to take things for granted. Whenever you are thankful on a continual basis for something, you will not take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Children are sometimes not great to take their parents for granted. Spouses sometimes take their husband or wife for granted until something happens. And then you wish you could say something or you wish you could do something. But when you're thankful on a continual basis, you don't take each other for granted. When you wake up in the morning and thank God for waking you up, you don't just take it for granted that you're just supposed to wake up. Yes, that's When right. you go to work and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm just another day. I'm making some money, getting a paycheck. You don't go there and have an attitude because you don't take it for granted. Whatever you are thankful for, you don't take for granted. And if you're taking something for granted, you haven't been very thankful for it on a continual basis. Yeah, every now and then we'll say thank you. Thanksgiving come around and at the table we'll gather hands and we'll say a deep prayer. Everybody try to figure out when you're going to close it. We're ready to eat, but you want to thank everybody then. Uh, if you want to go from A to Z and thank you. They try to figure out when can we get some turkey, but you want to thank everybody. No, not just one time, but on a continual basis because whatever I'm not thankful for, I take for granted. Mm. And when you're not thankful to God on a continual basis, you take his blessings for granted. Mm -hmm. As if he owes us something. Oh my God. And the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. We take for what? Now many of us, oh thank you, hold on. Many of us may not take God for granted, but we take for granted what he gives us. Mm -hmm. what, what pastor, he didn't give me my spouse, are you sure? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? And even if he didn't, did you say I do? So once you said I do, you know, he, he stepped back and said, okay, I'm going to honor it because it's marriage. Are you grateful? He didn't give me my children. Are you sure? I mean, you said it just happened. It was still a gift from God. Yes. Yes. And it just happened, but we'll go there another time. <laughs> it was still a gift from God. Although you don't always act that way, they are still gifts from God. Yes. 
Are you yes. thankful? Yes. Are you thankful that although you may not have the biggest house on the block, you got a house? Yes, yes that's right, amen. amen. Food on the table, although it may just be oodles and noodles in the cabinet, you got at least one pack you can celebrate. Are you thankful? Yes. Because yes. whatever you're not thankful for, you take for granted. Yes. And what you take for granted, you can lose. Uh huh. What you take for granted, you can lose. Children grow up. Spouses grow up hard. My God. David Myers, the husband of Joyce Myers, said something very powerful. I never forget he wrote something. He said, always don't look at the future for your children. Enjoy where you at. Because sooner or later they're gonna be old and gone. Or hit 16 and want to run after the opposite sex. They ain't gonna pay no attention to you. Mm -hmm. And you'll be where my baby at. Your baby is running like you were. <laughs> But be grateful for what you have. Be grateful. And what you're grateful for, you won't take for granted. Be grateful for the church you have. Be grateful for the teaching you get. Be grateful for the anointing that rests in this place because it doesn't rest in every place. And sometimes we get too familiar with the anointing because we see it on a continual basis where we are. We think it happens like that everywhere. And it don't. Because this anointing doesn't dwell with his approval. It's not. And just because he got church at the end of it does not mean God dwells there. Alright, God, say so. Be grateful. Because when you when you're thankful, it helps you to be grateful. For what you have. The third power of giving thanks is it helps change your conversation mm -hmm. from negative to positive. That's right. How many people you know you don't even want to be around? Because all they do is complain. Mm -hmm. They complain when they come to work. They complain when they get a raise. They complain when they don't get a raise. They complain when they have a short day. They complain when they have a long day. They complain when it looks like everything's going away. They complain when it looks like ain't nothing going away. No matter what they do, they complain. There's a danger in complaining. Yes. Yes. Can I take you to the scripture? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. There's a danger in complaining. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. We have a stay back. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. Listen to what it says. Neither mumble like some of them mumbled and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for an example, and they are written for our admiration, upon whom the ends of the world are come. In other words, what happened to the children of Israel in the death in the wilderness was for an example to us. And what the Bible is saying, when you go back to Numbers, I believe it's 14, 61 through 64, it talks about they mumbled against God. And it upset God so that his glory came down. And Moses and Aaron went to see what God wanted. And God said, I'm about to destroy these people. All because they were complaining. Mm -hmm. Complaining means you're not thankful for what God has done. They got to complaining, and God said, I'm going to destroy them. And Moses said, Aaron, get the incense, light it. Hurry up, because God is about to destroy the people. And by the time Aaron got there, I believe the Bible said 14,000 had already died. And Aaron stood in the midst where the plague stopped. When they saw, when the plague saw the incense, it stopped right there. And did not go any further. But 14,000 died just because they were complaining. My God. And when you're not thankful, if you usually have a negative conversation, 
when you're not thankful, what comes out of your mouth is negativity. And it looks like nothing can make you happy. Mm. But there's always something to be thankful for. Yes. And one of the powers of being thankful is it changes your conversation from negative to positive. And the Bible declares, see some scholars will say that we're under grace now and that wouldn't happen to us. But Corinthians says it was for an example <laughs> unto us. Which means grace can't save you on this. Oh God. Go ahead, sir. It means God does not want to hear your complaining. He does not mind you telling him what is happening in your life. But he does not want to hear your complaining. Why? Because if you ask him, he'll change it. Mm. Why complain to someone who can change it? Don't you usually complain to someone who can't do anything about it? And God is saying, you complain it to me, and I'm on the throne. And I can change this thing, but I won't change it. Because just for your complaining, you're showing me I still got something to work out in me. Ah, uh -huh. Just from your attitude, you're showing me there's some things I still need to work out with you. So I'm going to let you stay here. Have you ever come to the realization that some of the things I'm complaining about, I'm going through because of my own character and my own attitude and my complaining gets me deeper and deeper and deeper into it. Have you complained about it instead of getting better? It got worse. Because uh -huh. God is saying, I step back and allow it to happen because I'm trying to show you you. Because most complainers don't know they're complainers. Ah. We got quiet in the house. You need to take a complainer and play it back for them. And don't tell them who it is. And listen to them and they complain about the person complaining and don't even know it's them on the table. Because right. <laughs> most complainers don't know they are complainers. Because they have come so much of their conversation, so much of their lifestyle, they just do it, do it and they do it and they do it and they do it and they don't even know what's happening. And God is saying, I'm trying to change your way. And he does it by us giving thanks. That's why the verse said, in everything, give thanks. Can I read it again? Go ahead, sir. Once I find it. <laughs> in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In other words, it's God's will for you not to be a complainer, but a thank you person. It's his will for you to give thanks. And everything. And he said in Christ Jesus. So what he was looking at? He's not looking at the world to give thanks and everything. But his children, he wants them to give thanks and everything. Why? Because they got a good daddy. They got a good daddy. And with a good daddy, he expects them to give thanks. Yes. And he breaks it down. He says, this is my will concerning you. He makes it individual. He makes it personal. For power of giving thanks to them. Giving thanks helps build your faith. Yes, sir. Yes, it does. Because a lot of times, what we're going through, we have to find a scripture in the Word just to help us go through it. But when I give thanks, I'm hearing the words of God in my ears. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So when I give thanks in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of hard times, in the midst of trouble, I'm building my faith. Yes. But when you complain, 
you building doubt and fear. Uh huh. You ever heard people always complaining? Nothing works out well for me. Nothing goes right for me. Nothing did this. I never get this. I never get that. I never get that. And I look at them and tell me right. Because you just said it. But if I dare to change my conversation and begin to give God thanks in the midst of everything, watch, first of all, my own personal outlook, attitude, disposition will change. And then secondly, I will change the atmosphere around me. The reason why some people have gloomy atmospheres is because they are gloomy. Yeah. Reminds me of the peanut right from Charlie Brown, the guy who, the one that was dirty. Everywhere he walked around was a cloud of dirt. And you just like that. You still complaining every time you walk somewhere. You just got a cloud on your depression. And I'm trying to figure out, get away from me because I don't need that cloud of depression. I need somebody who's going to have joy. I need somebody who's going to lift them up in the midst of the storm. Yes, anybody can complain. But is there a child of God that will dare lift up his name and say, even No matter how far, how much I fall, 
He's going to be right there for me. Yes, that's, not even, that's not just the hope of the believer, but that's the proven fact of the believer. Because yes. many of us can look at our lives and say, Lord, I don't even know how I have what I have. Because uh -huh. it's not based on how much money I'm making. It's not based on how much education I have. Well, I'm not even supposed to have what I have. There's others who have better education, who have everything more, and they don't even have it going on like you got us having it going on. Yes. It's nothing but God. Yes. yes. What you? Mm. And the thing about what I love about God, He loves showing off God. for His children. God. Yes, He does. He loves showing off for us. And people look at you and say, how are you making it? How can you do that? How can they used to ask me, why can y'all go on trips? How can y'all do all that? You gotta understand, just because I'm a child, you made some way. Yes. And sometimes I'm driving down the road and he says, okay, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, you're gonna make it. By the time I get there, he done already made a way by the time I get there. You have to understand how good God is to them who serves him. And with that being the case, we got to give him thanks. Yes. We got to give him praise. That's right. I dare you good. to examine yourself and say, what have I been taking for granted? Yes, God. I remember several years ago, I heard when Bishop Kynes was alive, I heard him on the radio, and he said, I, I'm, I pray for my spouse, my wife, every day. I heard Bishop Hines say that and I got convicted. So Bishop Hines, I didn't do that. You were praying and everything. But it taught me something. Because what I pray for, I don't take for granted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. What I pray for, I don't take mm -hmm. for granted. And it helps me to grow a greater appreciation. The grass always looks greener on the other side. But until you get to the other side, you don't know if it's greener or not. And sometimes we wish, if I only had this, if I only had this one, if I only had this, if I only could do what they're doing, and then you get on the other side and realize it ain't all about that because you can have what they have and don't have a character and still mess up. Yeah. Being thankful helps build my character. Helps me to deal with change a whole lot easier. I dare you to examine yourself the last time your job said a change. How did you react? Uh, no, I didn't have something. Just going to look this way. <laughs> the last time they sent down a new memo and said, we're going to do it a little bit different. How did you react? Yeah, all of us been there. Yes. All of us been there. Because sometimes we didn't react the most positive way. And some of us are a little louder than others. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and voiced our opinion on how much we did not like the change. But if you're in the military, you either change. Or be somewhere else. <coughs> in the stockade with bread and water for the next three days. Well. And for some reason, I don't know, I don't know, I gotta close, but for some reason, we think Christianity is a democracy. It is not. No. And it is not. This is a kingdom. We have a king. And when he gives a decree, everybody is supposed to obey. Yes, that's right. But the thing about our kingdom, the Bible says that when the righteous are in rule, everybody prospers. Uh -huh. But when the wicked are in rule, everybody is miserable. Well, I don't have to worry about that if I'm a child of God because God is always in charge. Uh -huh. yes. So since this is a kingdom and his motivation is love, whatever commandment he gives me, he gives it to me for the God is so merciful. This
this is where his grace comes in. He has a kingdom, but he gives us choice, gives us a choice to say no. Mm. Yes. Yes, he does. Look at any other kingdom that is set up. When it's a kingdom establishment, you don't have the right to say no. But God gives you the right to say no. Even though he is the king, the absolute authority, there is no one above him. No one who can change his decree. His decree. But he gives us a choice to say no. And he says, if you obey my decree, all these blessings mm. comes along with it. Yes. <clears throat> but if you don't obey my decree, all these curses come along with it. Mm -hmm. And the choice mm -hmm. is ours. Whether we're going to obey or not obey. It's easier to serve God when you're thankful. Yes. It's easy to serve God with a grateful heart. You're not always going to go through the best circumstance. Well, you're not always going to have the best outlook. Mm -hmm. Some of the things you go through are going to be difficult. I won't lie to you from this pulpit. It's going to be hard some of the things you go through. But God said, no matter how hard it is, I'll still be there for you. Yes, sir. Yes. I'll never leave you. Yes. I'll never forsake you. And if you let me, I'll give you the strength to go through. All I need you to do is just be thankful. Yes, yes. Just be thankful. And if you can't find anything else to be thankful for, just that he saved me. What he did. Yes, if I can't find anything else to be thankful for, just that he saved me, what he did. It's enough to be thankful for. Amen. Do like the old patriarchs do as I'm closing. When they would go through things and you read in the Old Testament, they begin to say, the God of Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. What were they doing? They were reminding themselves of how good God is. Mm -hmm. So when they got to their request, they were able to give thanks and ask in faith. You may be going through something right now and may not be able to do that. Go back and reflect on what God has already done for you. Yes, right. yeah. Before you even begin to ask him to work out the situation that, he, that you need him to work out, just begin to thank him for what he's already done. It's going to build your faith. Yes. It's going to build your confidence. And then when you request what you need from him at that time, your faith will be at such a level that he'll hear your cry and he'll answer it. He just wants us to be thankful. Yes. Resting to your feet all over the building.